So welcome everyone also from my side. Um, yeah, so today we will talk about profitability by optimizing your product portfolio. So we will start off what does it mean to do variant man management in the times of poly crisis. So we, we feel like it's uh, every day comes something new up. Um, we'll do a little background of some tools we will use so that we all have the same understanding on wording of, of the following slides. And then I will show you different analysis you can do with our technology where we compare product models, solution spaces with other product models or product models with configured uh, configurations and also with derived data. Um, I have a small example so that you also get an idea how to do these analysis in our um, tools. Um, yeah, we will talk about the results. So if we can optimize our variant management and our portfolio, what benefits we will get. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, a uh, small Q&A at the end uh, when we have time and there are any questions. So let's start with um, the beginning, um, the variant management in times of poly crisis. And um, you maybe have the same feeling as I, it feels like more and more often we are yeah, forced to, to handle some crises on the market and so on. And I was looking into Wikipedia, is there something true you know, or is it just my, my good feeling? And um, what I looked up is um, that in the time between 1700 and 1800, it was around 25 crises we had to, to deal with. In 1900, it was already 27. Um, and just uh, in the last 24 years, we had already 40 listed economic crises. So I think the, the good feeling is uh, correct. Um, it looks, uh, or it is so that, that we more and more often uh, forced to deal with, with crisis. And of course, it also impacts us even more if we are not on a local business. So if we produce locally, for example, in Germany and just sell in Germany, we are of course uh, um, not in, impacted by crisis happen somewhere in China, US or somewhere else. Um, but if we go on a global market and we really deliver in all countries or have supplier in all the countries, then uh, all these crises hit us. Um, and we have to deal with that if there is a shortage, inflation, um, some problem somewhere, um, we, we have to handle all of them. And they somehow also impact our, our daily business and uh, our sales. So that means it becomes more and more important that we are the fittest on the market, that we can react to that and uh, yeah, agilely improve um, our business. Um, if you look into our variant management, um, why do we have to think about reducing it? Um, so if we if you look into the past, uh, it maybe also looked looked like that for for you. So you had some fixed costs like factories, machines, people, and all these things you need to to operate your business. Um, we have some variant costs which are clear related to the different variants we are offering, and we had a nice bunch of of margin. So that was maybe a picture some years ago. If you look today into it, um, we can see that the fixed costs are increasing, for example, based on the inflation and so on. And from the other side, we also get some pressure on from customers who want to buy it cheaper, also because of inflation and other reasons, and also maybe new competition, cheaper, cheaper vendors who kind of pre put pressure from the other side into it. And also in between, we have increased our variance complexity. So we added more and more variance to it. So also the black part is uh, increased here, our variance black box. And um, if we look into some numbers, so some of our customers have, for example, um, products with a complexity of 10 higher 30 possible combinations. And we compare that just with some other numbers like the stars in the universe and humans on earth, we shouldn't be surprised that we are not able to sell all possible combinations we have engineered and we can sell um, that, that all they, they are not, not sold uh, in the market. Um, so that means we, we have a large amount maybe um, where we, uh, of uh, variants we are never sold um, or which are never, never configured. What is behind uh, the variant costs? Um, of course, there are the different uh, additional materials uh, for the different variants. There's the engineering costs to develop the uh, product in the, uh, with the variants, uh, test and certification. So if I have a car with 
uh, two or three engines, I also have to certificate that, have to do crash tests and all these things. Um, manufacturing complexity, of course, it's different if I have a factory for just one variant or a product with, with 100 variants. Um, marketing and sales uh, is, is more complicated. Uh, supply chain, uh, inventory, service, all of that impacts uh, the variants we add to the product. And um, yeah, we still have, of course, the, the proud statement sometimes here, uh, we, need, we never sold two times the same variant. But is that still the way of thinking we want to have for, for, for this um, time we are in? Um, and I also was asking myself, can we see any relation between adding more variants equally to get more sold? Um, is, there, is there a relation uh, on that? And it's quite difficult to do that um, if you have no own sold numbers and so on. Um, what I did, I, I looked on the German car market where we, what, where we have uh, registration numbers. So in Germany, we have some public numbers, how many cars of which vendors and so on was registered uh, every month. And uh, I looked at these and compared two car manufacturers. One car manufacturer with a low variance, um, and one car manufacturer with a, with a high variance. So I just picked one of the tradi traditional, traditional German windows here. So I, I looked only on the electrical cars sold in the German market in the range of January to May 2024. And I compared here Tesla and Mercedes. Um, Tesla has uh, offers currently, or at that point, uh, four cars and uh, with each around 18 options you can select from. Mercedes offers nine electrical cars with around 150 possible options. Um, so the sold numbers for Tesla was 16,600 and for me, the Mercedes 13,300. So we cannot really see that having more options automatically means also that you have doubled uh, the, the numbers of uh, sold uh, cars here. Um, the cheapest on, on Tesla is around 40,000 list price. The cheapest on Mercedes, I think it's around 50,000 on, on list price. So you also can see maybe because of the less numbers of options, maybe also the base price could, could be cheaper here. Um, the same comparison works with BMW, with uh, Audi. The only except, exception here would be Volkswagen. Volkswagen also uh, sold more than Tesla and has a higher variance. Um, but I think it's, we, we get it, um, it not automatically means more uh, variance means also I can sell more on the market. Sometimes maybe also less options can be easier because when you go into the configurator, thinking about 18 options, it's quite easy for you. Thinking about 150 options, if you need that or not, you will take, take a while for that. Um, what I want to say is we maybe have to think a little different how we deal with variants today. Um, so instead of thinking about we never sold two times the same variant that every uh, car or option out there is, is uh, individual, we maybe should think more about we never wasted resources on unsold variants. That's what we should target. And that might be a potential statement of a CEO with a good variant management. Um, maybe Elon Musk could say that for, for Tesla. Um, so that, that's what we should target. Really offering only the variances uh, customers also are interested in and, and buying. Um, but the path to there is a little bit uh, challenging. So question might be, why do we not offering just the right variants? And what, what, I, what I think what happens very often in, in companies is if you think about reducing variants, you bring together a couple of people from the, from the organization, do a workshop and then brainstorm on what could be reduced. Um, and I'm pretty sure maybe some of you maybe have seen similar things in your company. So the people come together, some coming up with some idea, hey, how about this yellow color? Could we remove that? Um, and I'm pretty sure somewhere will say, ah, oh, yes, the, the yellow color is the trend color in my country. I cannot sell anymore without that. Mm, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Someone else comes up, maybe says, hey, could we get rid of these diesel engines? Um, many markets don't need any, any diesel engines. And then someone said, ah, but in Germany, we need these diesel engines. We cannot live without that. Mm, 
Okay. Um, next one. Hey, how about these large engines? I mean, in many countries, you only can maximum drive 120, 130 kilometers per hour. Why do we need these large engines? Um, does it make any sense? Um, ah, in my country, maybe in Dubai, I only sell the large engines. So whenever somewhere else suggests to reduce something, there will be somewhere who says, ah, I cannot live without that variant. And the challenge we might have is, are they right? Can we prove that? The problem we often or many of you might have is variant management is a quite black box. So you know what characteristics you put in, you know what rules you put in, but what really which combinations are valid and uh, can be offered and was sold and so on is for many companies a big black box. And that's something we would like to change uh, with configured technology. But before we get there, uh, a little background. Um, so just that we talk all the same language and you understand a little bit the slides following in the uh, analysis. Um, if you think about the product model, um, you can take all the characteristics and you can create a matrix uh, which defines which combination of the different characteristics are combinable, which are not allowed to combine and so on. And what you will get is uh, a red space, which is a theoretically possible solution space of all your um, combinations and a green solution space, which is a valid one. Um, the the um, options you can build, you can offer and uh, sell in the market. And that's what our uh, VT technology is doing. So we take all your characteristics, all your rules, we compile the valid solution space out of that and now all the possible combinations in your product model. And then we can go in and query a certain amount of characteristics, for example, and get that out as a table or a data set um, from the solution space. So for example, if you think about a car, what are the possible combinations between the different engines, uh, different car shapes, uh, the different assistance uh, systems and so on. Simplified, uh, I, will, I will work with circles here. Um, so the red circle is uh, the technical or the, the theoretical possible combinations and the green circle is the valid solution space so the one you are able to build and sell on the market and the black dots are kind of indicating all the different variants in this space so we can call that as a version one or a set of configurations one so as, as the title says we go into the set theory so that's our first set our first amount of possible combinations. If you now make some changes to our product model, over time you add characteristics, you remove characteristics, you change your rules, um, you can do new stuff you can't do in the past and so on. So your product model is developing over time. That also means your valid solution space is changing. So some options you no longer offer, some options you can now offer as a new feature and so on. So it changes over time. So we can call that our set two and also shown as a green circle here. And if you now have two sets, we can compare these two sets uh, together and figure out where do we have overlaps? Where do we have uh, opt, um, elements which are only in the version one and which are only in the version two? That means we can figure out which of these configurations was added, which one are staying because they are in version one and in version two, and which one was removed because it was in version one, but no longer in version two. And that's all what we will do the next um, 15 minutes. Um, we will build different solution spaces um, out of uh, our product models and the configurations and so on. And we will comp compare them and analyze what could be potential outcomes of that. And that will help us to find exactly these variants we maybe never sell where we have over engineering and so on which we can easily remove from our product portfolio so it was a little background and just that you understand uh, how to read my slides um, so going forward we will look into comparing a product model with a product model so two valid offered solution spaces and we get back to the different versions of one product model. Um, so imagine you have a version one, and then 
a shortage of a part happens. So maybe the large CPU for your product model can be no longer uh, delivered. So some features which cannot run only on the small CPU, which requires a large one, cannot be offered anymore. So for example, for a car, maybe autonomous driving can be no longer offered, uh, but other assistance systems can also run on the small CPU. That means, of course, your solution space is changing um, if you apply these rules and um, you have a, have a new set of possible combinations. Let's say something else happens and we are no longer allowed to sell into market X. So that means we have maybe some special variants which are only created for this market. Um, so for example, UK has a left-hand drive um, while many other countries have a right-hand drive um, the other way around. Um, and um, that's, that's something um, which could be also a variance uh, you only sell in certain markets or because of law and regulations and so on. Um, so we get a third version here. So we have now three different versions uh, we have offered over the time. And if you now would like to figure out what are the variants we lose because of the, short, of the shortage or what are the variants we lose because we are no longer able to sell into the market, we can now query these different solution spaces and we can ask the system, hey, show me only the one which are affected by the yellow uh, impact here. And that's this one here. This one here was removed based on the um, shortage of the large CPU, for example. And if you do the same, we can also ask uh, what are the one which was removed because of we are no longer able to sell into this market. And this would be here, the green area. So all the one which was available in the version two, but are no longer available in version three. So that's one way you can work with the solution space, compare, combine functionality in our tool. Um, modularization is also something where we can help with this functionality. So imagine you're offering four different products and some of them, they have some overlap. Let's say the three, with the overlap, they are three different types of electrical motors, while the fourth one, the white one here is a sensor. Of course, if there is no overlap between the products, we cannot get any, any insights in this way in com combining the solution space. But if you have here three electrical motors, um, we now can figure out these spaces here in between where we have a high overlap. And these high overlap would be good potential areas where you could think about some modularization. So if they are all using same options, same capabilities, you can think the, about um, that these functionalities and the technical um, objects behind can be modularized, generalized, uh, and used in all of these products. Another one is over-engineering. So in a moment you're creating a technical model, you get your technical buildable solution space. But this is not every time equal to what you are allowed to sell on a market. Um, so the red one is again the possible combinations. The green one is what you technically can build. And this gray one here are two countries uh, you are selling to and um, which you can sell in these countries. So you can see some of these combinations can be sold to the German market, some to the Chinese market, some to both markets. But more important is the green space left here on the side. So there could be some options you are technically able to build but you're not able to sell into the market. So it could be, for example, a car without side mirrors. If your product model would contain this option that you can configure a car without side mirrors, but in all countries, the law says a car has to have uh, side mirrors, then that might be a variant you never can sell. And that's something you could totally remove from your solution space, from your product portfolio, and you can streamline your offering. So that's some examples how you can use the set theory and the solution spaces to combine and get analytics and insights into your uh, offered solution space. Um, we also can combine product models with configurations because a configuration and a valid combination is exactly the same. It's a list of options, selections, and so on. Um, 
That means we have again our three different versions here and the combined underneath. And um, we can now look into some sub subsets of the valid solution space. And that's, for example, all the configured configuration. Every time somewhere goes into your configurator in each of your sales, ch sales channels, you store the configuration. That would be all the configured configurations. And the subset of that would be the sold one. Of course, if you have sold it, it was also configured and it should be also a valid one. Um, um, but uh, you, not, not all, all you have configured are sold. So it's a smaller uh, set of configurations. And the same applies if you look only on the sold variants in the German markets and this is even smaller set of configurations and what you have sold worldwide, for example. And we could have these information also for all the three versions so that over time um, where, you, where you're offering changes, also the sold and configured configurations are changing. And configured, we store all these information in the, the configured um, uh, ACE configuration store or configuration thread. Um, so wherever you make a configuration of our technology, we can store that in a central database with all the configurations in there. So independent if it is on a web shop, if it is on a website configurator, in a CPQ tool, partner portal, they all can save it into the single storage um, here. And then you have it really accessible for these nice analytics here. So that means we can also build a solution space out of that. For example, for the configured one, it could look like that one here. Um, if you request all these three, and if you have it for all three variants here, the configured, sold, and sold in Germany, it could look like that. The blue one are the configured, the violet one, the sold, and the pink one are the sold in Germany. And now we can go in and compare what we have sold with what we have offered on the market and figure out what are our high runners, no runners, and so on. And that's what we can do here. So um, we have our solution space here, um, the configured one and the valid solution space. We can combine them and we now can figure out that there is a large green amount and the green one means these are never configured. So no one of your customers has ever touched in a configurator these configurations. Uh, the green and the blue one are all the one you never sold. So theoretically, you could remove all the green and the blue one. Of course, tomorrow could come someone who wants to configure a green one, so you should be a bit careful with that. Um, but that's areas where you're offering configurations and variants which are never sold or used uh, uh, so far. And remember the guy who said, ah, I cannot sell without this option. And maybe he's not totally wrong. So he is every time offering that option to the customer, um, but he never sold this option. And by doing these reports and analytics, you can now figure it out and see, okay, there is uh, the option, you, you are right, you configured that, but you never sold that. So it could be maybe something you can, can reduce. You now can prove if it is really true what people complain about, you get, you, you turn your black box into a white box and you can really look inside. Um, some other use cases could be that you request all the overlapping configurations from all the three versions. So the, the options or the, the variants you offer all the time and compare that what, with what you have configured and you can figure out that there are some you have never configured maybe. So these could be maybe your no runner. So over a longer period of three versions, we never sold this one here. So it could be maybe candidates uh, you can remove. Also, when you make changes, you can figure out what are the options you are losing. So remember, we are forced to no longer able to sell into a certain market. That means also we're losing some so sales and um, uh, so yeah, some sales uh, here uh, in, in this market. You can figure out what, what does that mean? How high is the impact? It's also nice before you deploy a change to check that, does it have a high impact on what, what you're selling in the market or you are just removing options which are anyhow not sold. And the same for services. Um, so services is of course important to know for the spare parts, what is the sold space? Um, 
And if you also have predictive maintenance, you maybe also know which of your machines are still in use. Um, and you only need to keep spare parts on stock for, for variants you have sold, and not for all the green one you have never sold that just would be an overhead in your, um, in your stock. So you also can, can improve these spare part stocks if you want um, for different regions and so on. So we can also compare product models with derived data. Um, so we have seen our solution space for the sold and the valid solution space. And if we have a valid uh, configuration, we can solve a bomb list out of that uh, or routings or other derived data. Um, for a bomb, your hierarchy might look like that. So you have here one item you're interested in, the item X, and it is somewhere in the hierarchy. Um, and there are also some selection conditions. And if you combine these selection conditions, you get the valid solution space for this item. If your item appears multiple times in the structure, you maybe alter, alter it with an uh, OR and the other um, combinations. But this defines now the valid solution space for the item X and get that into the same picture, which is a circle in our possible combinations. And we now can combine that, for example, with the version three, the sold variants and our bomb space. And your bomb solution space could be now in different positions in here. So the most worse would be it is in the red field. So maybe that's something you was able in version one to offer, you no longer offer it, it was never sold. Um, so that's, that's bomb items you just can kill and remove. So they are not possible, they was never sold. Um, yeah, just remove that. Then the best case, of course, uh, bomb items which are valid and sold. Um, it could be also that the bomb items are sold in the past, but today no longer valid. So you don't need it anymore for manufacturing reasons, but for services, for service bombs, you still need that. And it could be also that it is here in the green space. Um, so it's valid, but it was never sold. So you can think about if you would like to remove the variances which deal with these bomb items because we have never sold that. So these are different ways how you can use our solution space, combine and compare, fun compare functionality to get some insights into the product models you're offering on a market and to get products improved and your portfolio improved. And yeah, that's a nice example for the supply chain issue where you are no longer able to deliver these items. You also know what variants are impacted by that. So an example, so our UI uh, to test and play around with that looks like that. So all the data you see here and functionalities, they are also accessible via the API. So if you would like to access it from a Python script and uh, take the data into a nice data analytic or whatever, that's of course technically possible. Um, so what I want to figure out here is which are the options I only sell to the UK market. So I do here two queries. One query is querying all the options sold to the UK market and one query is get all the options sold to all other markets. And the query looks like that. So you're specifying the variables you would like to request or the characteristics. Optionally, you can specify a variant, uh, an effectivity date, and you have a market, um, you know, a filter, so like a rare condition in a select uh, SQL statement, where you say only the one for the UK market. And the query for the other one looks like the same. And then we can say here how the output format should look like and uh, that you, how you want to combine now the solution spaces and which part of the combination you are interested in. So you want to have all in the UK and not in the other uh, markets. And as a result, you get this red area here, um, all the um, possible combinations just available in the UK market. And here we have the right-hand drive with some special dollar frequencies and so on. So if you would be no longer able to sell into the UK market, you could remove all these variants here. And that's a way how the system can help you to find these elements. And whenever there is a crisis and you are not longer to, able to sell to the market, you can use this functionality to figure out what is the impact on your portfolio. 
So getting to the results, what is now the benefits we get out of that? Um, so we ended up with that one. So we have high fixed costs, we have some variant costs and a very low margin here. With the analysis we have now seen, we can turn the black box here into a more white box. So we're figuring out what is over-engineering, what is never configured and unsold, what is configured but unsold, and which one you really have sold and you are really able for your business so far. And then you can define some strategies. So the red one, you can remove all of them. Um, the yellow one, you maybe decide to keep the half of them, so more important and where you expect something comes in. Um, on the blue one, the same. And of course, the dark blue one, you keep all of them. That means you now apply your strategy. So you reduce the numbers of CTO configurations here uh, to the amount which is useful. Um, you turn some of them um, you expect to sell but have not sold yet into CTO plus options. So you have all the configuration data is there but maybe not all the manufacturing and uh, engineering data already. And the red one, of course, you just throw them away and save that. Um, theoretically, I said you can remove all the red and the yellow one because they, they do not impact your sale today. And uh, as a result, you can now see the fixed costs, they stay. Of course, you can improve on that, but that's not part of the session here but you can now see the variant costs are optimized. And as a result, you get a higher margin. So you can increase your margin. You have now more space to work on a market to deal with very cheap vendors and so on. And you have reduced your variant costs. So if you look into the slide we, we saw before, if you're on a global market, you are hit by all these crises and impacted. If you are now able to work against that. So we cannot remove the crisis on the market um, and they, they happen. Um, but your curve could look like that. So whenever a crisis comes, of course you're hit by that. So you're not expecting that, but you can use your tools with Configured and our VT technology to work against that, to figure out what variants I can now throw away because I cannot offer it anymore and so on. So you really can figure out what is the impact on my portfolio. You can streamline that, optimize it and work better so that while when your com competitors go that way and heavily impacted by all these crises, you can walk this way and you are better on the market. You maybe have a better margin. You can make business here. Um, yeah. And uh, as a last statement, um, so as you know, we frequently do conferences and we ask our customers, hey, would you be interested to talk on, on our conferences? And we recently had, had one guy uh, who said, sorry, I, I don't want to talk on your conference because I see configured technology as my competitive advantage on the market. And I don't want that my con competitors, they see what I'm using and use the same tools more or less. Um, so I think that's really a proud statement that our technology brings a lot of benefit to this person and you don't want to share that with his competitors. Um, yeah, so you can see it's also proved in the market that our technology can, can bring a lot of benefits to companies. So that was it. Uh, I took a little more time than planned, um, <laughs> but I hope you liked it and you can use a the content and knowledge. Thanks, Heiko. Um, at least I enjoyed the presentation very much. I think, uh, I hope the audience did. Um, indeed, uh, um, the time is, uh, is a question here <laughs> right now, <laughs> but I uh, got a couple of questions in. I just want to take one and then we close it down. Um, okay. But uh, we will respond to all the questions we, we got. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, we will do that after the tech talk. Let me just take one question. You can think, think that's interesting. Um, uh, the question is, is there a limitation in solution space sizes you can handle for the analysis you showed? Um, generally, there is no limitation. Um, so you can, we, we can deal with very large solution space. We saw that before 10 higher 30 and larger is something we can, we can deal with. Um, of course, as larger um, the data you, you're requesting from the solution space, um, as more it has impact on your local computer memory, your bandwidth, and uh, maybe you hit some 
limitations in numbers of rows in an extra sheet and so on. Um, to deal with that, uh, we have different formats we can return. So an enumerated one, which is all the possible combinations in a, in a list, which is of course, when you have a million and billion of possible combinations, a large amount of data. For that, we also have a CPR um, version where you have uh, kind of you know, a packed version of the enumerated table. Um, and we also maybe have in future capabilities to get a graph view out of that. So which is also even more compact. Um, so the limitation is more on the computer resources you might have on your side than on a technical limitation on, on our side. 